Hey everyone, Rob from Southgate Media Group here. Before we get started with this podcast, we have a quick message. If this is your first time checking out the show, we love that you found us and we really hope you enjoy it. What we have to say is for the subscribers. If you enjoy our shows, would you please donate to help keep these going? We don't want to have to put traditional ads on these shows, but this does cost money. So we really do rely heavily on donations. To make a donation to the show, please go to our website, www.southgatemediagroup.com. Go to the page for the show, and in the upper right-hand corner is a donate button. It takes you right to PayPal, and you can donate whatever amount you want. Thanks a lot for listening, everybody. And now, on with the show. Media Group podcast dedicated to all things heroes and heroes born related. I am Lilith, and on the hunt for specials with me, as always, is Ricky. Yeah, <laughs> up for discussion today <laughs> is episode 322 Turn and Face the Strange, which I personally think should be like the hero's tagline. <laughs> Well, I mean, for Heroes Reborn, I'm imagining it's going to be some really weird, strange stuff going on. <laughs> I'm hoping that they don't kind of force it on. They've said that they're not going to force like a uh, a tagline, but yeah, there is going to be some strange things going on. So let's just get into the recap of this episode because a lot of weird stuff's going down. Yes. Uh, I think this is an ap- appropriately titled episode for once. <laughs> <laughs> let's see the technical specs. This episode first aired April 6, 2009. It was written by Rob Fresco and Mark Verheiden. And we have uh, Jano Spark. Coming back once again. Wow, he directed a lot of episodes, heroes, and not realized this. <laughs> what about that sentence? Matt is out for revenge against Danko. Hero and Ando continue their road trip to deliver Matt Parkman Jr. to his father. Angela, Nathan, Peter, and Claire come together to unearth secrets from the past. Dun, dun, dun. I know, right? <laughs> that literally deserves dramatic go for me. Um, let's see what else happened. Tyler basically sets out to destroy Noah, so that's... Mm. And Mohinder, well, he finds his father's old files. And, uh... Fades into obscurity. Oh, sorry, no. <laughs> we'll get there, believe me. So, where... Do you want to do, like, locations? Yeah, I guess, Is that yeah. how you want to work with? Yeah, well, I think that's more appropriate. Yeah. Let's just get the goofiness out of the way. The one that kind of pulled the episode down. And I'm sorry, it's here at Ando. And their little Nissan Cube driving through Ohio. <laughs> you know what? I'm looking at my notes right now. I have nothing. <laughs> I have nothing on the Hero Ando story. So, yeah. yeah. That's literally all that happens. We're driving through Ohio and baby touch and go keeps like letting the, making the oh, car yeah. stop. It's with redneck, redneck Asian. Yeah! <laughs> I know that guy though. I can't remember his name off the top of my head though. I'm checking now. It's no, Kenneth Cho. Not... Is it? Yeah, that's who the guy is. Oh, yeah. Where is he from? No, yeah, Ken Cho, yeah. Sons of Anarchy. Oh, okay. oh my God. Sorry. I'm literally just looking at like the uh, the pictures um, in the Heroes Wiki, and when you look at his picture as Sam Douglas, he's very chubby faced, and then you go to his actual like with Heroes Wiki page for him as a character, he's so skinny, it's weird. But yeah, anyway, enough yeah, of that. That's the reason I remember this section because <laughs> of that. Um, anyway, so yeah, that that's all that literally happens. Yes. Yeah. So then. I guess we can cut to Mohinder telling Parkman that he's going to India by ship. Yeah. And he's like, come with me. I'm like, and you're like, oh, go man, with come me. on. With go me. get Molly. <laughs> and I was like, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Matt had to go back to Janet. Oh, no, not really. He was, first things first, he wanted to have a go at Yeah, he wanted yeah. to get da- revenge for Daphne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying her name from here on out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mohinder tries to reason with him, but Matt's like, nah, I got, I, you've been a good friend. Let's just say goodbye. And I'm like, no kiss? <laughs> I know that that was the perfect chance for them just to have a little kiss and be like, it was good while it lasted, wasn't it? A hug is so big. <laughs> Such a bummer. Anyway, then, oh, my favorite thing in this episode happens. Sandra just shows up in Building 26. I swear I thought it was freaking Silas. Yeah, it was really random, but yeah. Like, obviously, we know Sila's got um, the shape-shifting powers at this moment, and and we know that he wants to make HRG pay. 
So anytime HRG's in a scene with anyone, like the whole time I'm thinking, is this Silo? And it only happens a couple of times. But yeah. When he yeah. And then like Jango rubs it in Noah's face. He's like, it's funny how I got the job done. <laughs> it's really good. I really like it. Um but once again, like what what did you call it again before? A uh, um what was your what was you, Yes, it's a pissing contest. Because <laughs> like, even it's in totally my notes good. even in my notes I've still got my original sayings for that. But yeah. <laughs> but yeah, obviously, you know, you've got Sila is still concerned with HRG. Danko's at the same time double crossing HRG. And yeah, Sila just wants to torture him. It's basically like they're tag teaming against HRG at this point. Um just to try and I guess I don't know what it is. I think it might be Danko trying to push out the last remnants of Nathan Petrelli in the government and try and have it to himself. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. But then there's that kind of parallel between them, uh, between Danko and HRG because, you know, they both learn the price of letting like the loved ones get involved in their dangerous work because, obviously, you know, um, Sila's there using Sandra to get to him, but then also HRG's doing what he does later on in the episode to Sandra and... You know, and Matt Parkman is basically the siler of Danko's story, and he's you know that's something I'd never really thought I'd say. But you know, that was sounded so weird when you just said that. <laughs> you got both men kind of dealing with their significant other rejecting them in the same day when you know they are just confronting each other about siler, and it makes it obvious that you know Noah or the HRG or the Bennets they can never have a normal life because why are they even trying at this point? Like uh, homeschool your kids. <laughs> exactly but yeah also one of my notes on the Bennett's and by that I just mean obviously Sandra and uh, HRG is Noah done fucked up because he did <laughs> he did it uh, scared the hell out of me yeah. it was like really intense mm, definitely really intense and it's not just the way that he said everything it's the way he pushes her down on the table kind of reminded me of um, what's the film Watchmen so, yeah. oh yeah but yeah hashtag rapey but yeah <laughs> You can tell that obviously Noah's going, Noah's like kind of at breaking point at this moment. And he knows that Sila's around and he knows that Sila's kind of messing around with him. And this is just him being like, obviously what I said, done fucked up. Because, you know, that's basically what happens. Oh, so meanwhile, Matt decides. To... Oh, no, 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 no. There is one more thing. <laughs> Sila in um, Sandra's raincoat. Oh, it's so funny. <laughs> Sorry, it's just like he walks off with this the rain like this woman's raincoat. Oh man. But yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh god. And the effects for Siler reverting back look so creepy and gross. Yeah. I liked it though. It was better than um than Candace's kind of power, even though they're they're totally different things. Yeah. So Parkman. Yeah, Parkman. He plants a thought into Dago's head, saying that the person he cares about the most isn't safe and to go to them right now. Turns out it's an escort. Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and then he just basically tells her about Danko and just ruins his life. Or, you know. But it was fake. Everything he told her was fake. I mean, he pretended like he lived in Chicago, and I'm like, wow. But then I'd also like the fact that, you know, Matt's able to kind of work it out what's going on because obviously he he's seen loads of people like that on the police force the kind of lonely men who kind of can only get love from someone that they can kind of call on the whole time that it's not someone who's always there at home and it's not like you know like noah noah's got his family life at home and you know he always has to go back to that whereas danko can just go to this woman whenever he wants he doesn't need to like always go back to her it's always weird how she can be in love with an adulterer but when it comes to like a murderer, she's like, yeah, I'm all out. But yeah, Parkman kind of succeeds in the end. and he. But then at the same time, he kind of doesn't succeed because he's giving Danko more motivation to kind of hate specials. And without Elena in his life, he's going to be more focused on the job. So it's just going to make things worse for him. So yeah. Oh, and meantime, in the between time, Angela gives Noah a call and somehow manages to call Nathan, who's with Clara, right? Yes. Yes. So they, they're yeah. all on the path to go to Coyote Sand. Is it Hero and Ando kind of uh, do that link, that red that red strings of fate thing where they're, they're in the same place at the same time? Yeah, they passed. Whose car did they pass? They passed Hero and Ando's car with the uh, baby. You know, Ando, make the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. that. Oh, and then at the end of it, Parkman seems like he's at his wit's end and he's going to like let Danko basically kill him after kind of ruining his life 
And then Hero comes in, stops time, gives him baby Matt, and he falls in love with the baby. But yeah. And they all drive off to Washington. Yes. Yep. Oh, so also Mohinder finds uh, his father's files in his old apartment, and he finds uh, information on his Operation Icarus. Yes. Um, which is AKA of Coyote Sands. Yes. And he sees that there's an old security pass. He's like, my father was there. I must go there now. Now, that was the, the weird thing about this episode. What? It's like, okay, we're going to okay. try to shove Mohinder in here. <laughs> we haven't been paying attention to him. Quite <laughs> and so, yeah, Operation Ic- Ic- Icarus was just like the the operation name for Coyote Sands, right? I was just yeah. like wondering why that wasn't brought into the kind of Heroes Reborn thing. You know that. Um, just because they called it Coyote yeah, Sands. Coyote Sands, so yeah. I like that name though, but I don't know if it was like, if you name a project Operation Icarus, are you expecting it to fail miserably or not? <laughs> yeah. Or did they just not know mythology and thought it was a cool name? I, I don't, yeah. I can't for the life of me figure it out. Okay, yeah. So that's basically it. Yep. Oh, well, other than that, we end the episode with them digging up skeletons. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Ugh. I like the I like the way that Angela's just watching them all do it. <laughs> Even Claire. Get to like, work. Get to work, people. But yeah, cool. I knew them all. <laughs> anyway, I think that's all that really happened. Yeah. So let's get on to the review. So, who's your favorite character? Ooh, that's a toughie. I'm going to go with Sandra. Uh, this was the yeah. breaking point. Finally. I didn't think I was ever going to see a breaking point for Sandra, so... Yeah, because it's kind of been on the cusp every time, but this is obviously the the final breaking point, so yeah. I think I'm going to have to go with Parkman. I just like the desperate kind of Parkman, and he's not... Well, he's still Paul Parkman, but at the same time, he's kind of doing something about it, but then also he's kind of... Make it worse. Yeah, but then he's also... He's he is making things worse, but at the same time he's like he's at the end of his tether and he's a man he's being pushed to the very edge and he has nothing left to live for and then that obviously brings in Matt Parkman Jr., which kind of changes his mind about everything. It's a very like most things with Matt Parkman, it's a very quick change, but you know, I can forgive it for that. It's why him and Mohinder fit so well together. <laughs> um character interactions. I definitely want to go with when Matt sees his baby he totally melts and becomes like oh daddy 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 yeah so cute that, i think that's it really i think i'm gonna go with a uh, hrg and uh sanj la that's the only way i can kind of say it uh silent sila sandra i think it's it's so good and um yeah it's it's really it's really like close to the bone not the bit with like with sandra and hrg but you know the way that Nate, like HR, um, the way that Silas just like trying to destroy HRG. Um, I really like it because obviously, you know, they've got that kind of blood feud, and ever since they kind of have re- retconned his kind of storyline to be more concerned with um, HRG creating Sila. Yeah. So, yeah. And that Chandra Shuresh. I really, uh, really hate that, by the way. Chandra Chandra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no. I mean the fact that they retconned it. Oh, yeah. Uh, had to have felt something, I guess. I guess, yes. Um, what about lines? And to prepare for the future, you have to understand the past. You want answers, then you dig. And then Angela just makes them all dig. <laughs> Matt Park made me pack Matt oh. Park. He is your son. And I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't you mean, uh, <laughs> you're about to go like Matt Parkman meet Pac Markman. That would have been <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> Bizarre world, anyway. So, great. Mm, this is another solid C. I mean, I really was interested about what was going down in Coyote Sands, but we kind of get shortchanged. And I understand that, like, the episode after this and everything, but I don't know, it feels like that's what it was building to, and then we get, like, this this crazy, like, Matt Parkman thing. Like, I feel like that could have been put in in the next episode, mm. not this one. Well, I, I'm going to go with a C+, because I really like the episode. Um, I like the whole kind of Sila and like Sila toying with uh with HRG but I also like the kind of parallels with Parkman toying with uh Danko the rest of it I could could have cut could have kind of done without um they kind of dragged the episode down but yeah that's why so yes oh um also I like how they just casually say like how like you know after the events of duel where you know we thought Sila was dead yeah yeah the glass melted yeah yeah that was a nice little uh nice little thing i like that yeah 
just like, oh, thanks for that answer that nobody cared about. <laughs> but then they... Heroes. You just still need <laughs> Siler, so what? <laughs> they did um, kind of bring it up with the... Well, no, they didn't bring it up, but, you know, you had Doyle see um, Siler in his, like, puppet with, puppet master with no string or whatever the name of that graphic novel was. So they kind of are clarifying it, which I kind of like. Yeah. So, yes. The only trivia previously known as Face a Stranger, and then it was turned... Hey. Yeah. It seems like this is the episode where they always have the difficulties name in the episode. <laughs> That's it, really. There's a really. Oh, there was an actual Project Icarus yeah. in uh, real life. It's like some MIT experiment to destroy a meteor for a collision with Earth or something. Nice. Did they want that to fail as well? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, humanity is a mess, I'm just saying. <laughs> the graphic novel we will move on to. The graphic novel is called Scenic Route, or Route, depending on how you like to pronounce it. It's basically following the events of, you know, Noah shooting that agent, thinking that it was Sila, and having to go on the run. He's on his way to Coyote Sands, and on the way, he gets a call, or, you know, he sees West, and we work out that, or West is working for Rebel, and um, West is basically trying to find Alex, who, you know, is obviously another one of uh, Claire's exes, and they're both on the verge of being captured, and, um, yeah, it's just basically him helping them out. So, yeah, Noah is basically on the road to redemption to try and make things better with Claire once again. There's nice little bits in this, like, obviously there's mention of West in working with Rebel, and there's also a mention of Sparrow, Red House. So, yeah, you know, there's nice little uh, Easter eggs for anyone who follows all that kind of stuff. Yep. So this story was written by Zach Crayley and the art was by Mark II. The Easter egg was a behind-the-scenes image of John Glover, a.k.a. Papa Gray. Oh, Lionel Luther. <sighs> <laughs> so yeah, the following people joined us on the live tweet. They're either tweeting, retweeting, or faving during the live tweets. We have Mike Schmidt 09 Joshua Guevara underscore, uh, Nagy is my BFF, Liz underscore at heart, English Idiot 101, Paraceline, and Soft underscore guitar. 60 forgot that 60 so yeah um, and we also have a feedback from our favorite english idiot charlie uh, I wonder who. <laughs> um, she says i really liked into asylum it was great to have danko and sila finally meet it made you think about what would happen i quite liked sila with danko it was an interesting partnership i liked claire and nathan having some bonding time in mexico and nathan confessing to claire was a nice touch for nathan I'm glad to see there are less stories in the episode. It made the episodes flow better. Turn and face the stranger was good. Uh, it was so tense. Now Sila has shapeshifting and working out if it is him or not. Noah's desperate storyline finally got him out of building 2-6. Matt changed too much, but thankfully he got a hold of himself at the end. Hero and Ando were funny as usual. Also, Coyote San seems to have been introduced too late into the show. Overall, very good episodes. So, yes. Yeah, she ain't lied about that. <laughs> we should have been learning about that. In oh, Yes, we should have been learning about that around about uh, episode eight, which is what? No, no, actually, yeah, it's about the right time for that kind of flashback episode. So, yeah. But, yeah, we yeah. did learn about it far too late. Looks like it's time for some shameless plugs and self-promotion. We'll start with the show contact info. We here at Prime Tech Files love listener feedback. If you would like to get a hold of us, we have a ton of ways. You can email us via primatechfiles at gmail.com. You can leave us a private message or interact with our posts over on facebook.com forward slash Primatech Files. We live tweet two episodes per week every Saturday starting at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For more information, be sure to follow us on Twitter at Primatech Files. You can also find us on Clamor, Tumblr, and YouTube by simply searching for Primatech Files. If you enjoy this podcast, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe to us on iTunes. What's that? You don't have an iTunes account? That's okay. We're on a lot of podcaster services such as Stitcher and SoundCloud. All you have to do is search for, you guessed it, Primatech Files. We're also on Lib Libsyn. And if you want to follow our RSS feed there, all you have to do is go to primatechfiles.libsyn.com and bookmark the site to stay up to date with this podcast. Libsyn is spelled L-I-B-S-Y-N, just in case you were wondering. We look forward to interacting with you. If you love our podcast, be sure to check out Southgate Media Group's iTunes provider page to see a list of what other podcasts are hot and trending in our network. Or you can take that one step further and visit southgatemediagroup.com, where you can find a full list of our 80-plus podcasts, along with weekly blogs and information about all the hosts. 
With so many podcasts that cover everything from anime to wrestling, there's sure to be tons of podcasts that can interest you. Hey guys, you should know by now that you can find me on Twitter at Lil Hellfire. If you have a Tumblr, be sure to check out it's lilhellfire.tumblr.com. And of course, be sure to swing by my blog if you are a pop culture junkie or comic book geek at littlepopculturevulture.blogspot.com. I also host several other podcasts on the Southgate Media Group Network. Some of them are The Flashpoint, Queen Consolidated, and Channel 52. So if you are into, obviously, DC comic book related stuff, be sure to check it out. You can find my writings at tvbinges.com. It's a place for all your binge watching needs, and you can also create your own TV binge and we'll help promote it. We do a monthly binge watch, which you're more than welcome to join in. Just go to their Twitter at tvbinges just to find out more information. You can find me on Twitter at Ricky J D S. That's R-I-C-K-Y-J-D-I-A-Z or Z if you're American. All right, time to wrap it up. We want to thank you for listening to this discussion of Prime Sex Files where we discuss episode 322, Turn and Face the Strange. Look forward to the next episode very much. So I'll see you on a better way. Please remember to interact with our Facebook posts, like, share, and comment as well. And you can download the podcast, Save the World.